Welcome back to Niaga Awani. So iProperty.com.my revealed that median transaction price and median price per square foot PSF values of subsea residential properties in 2021 are, are on an upward trend compared to figures recorded during the pre-pandemic period of 2018. The subsea include landed properties, terrace house, bungalows and even semi-detached houses and high-rise properties like apartments, condominiums and services apartments across the four key states of Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Penang and Johor. So to discuss further on these trends with us virtually right now, join us Sheldon Fernandez, Country Manager of Property Guru Malaysia. Thank you very much for joining us, Sheldon Fernandez. So uh, thank you, my first question, enough, yeah, thank you. So uh, what do you think about the what do the subsell property price trends look like from before the pandemic and after? Actually, very interesting data points that we pulled from iProperty.com. But I think uh, before we you know, go into the data, it's important to point out that we are moving to a post-pandemic stage. Uh, so we were at the pandemic. We're now at an endemic stage. So you know, a lot of relaxation of rules, but we're still not out of the woods. And we're moving to a post-pandemic. That said, though, I think the interesting data point we'll see is that whilst the volume of transactions have come down, we did see an increase though in median transaction price and also the overall uh, transaction price of subsidy residential properties. Um, so the, the median transaction price for subsidy residential properties increased by 11.1%. The price per square foot, which is the median value, increased by 6.3%. Whereas, as I said, volumes though uh, have come down by 8.8% uh, in the year, if you take a comparison between 2018 to 2021. So in your opinion, Sheldon, what factors help improve the median transaction prices and price per square foot or PSF values of uh, these sub properties? Well, I think the, the interesting fact is properties, you know, centered around the sentiment of the consumers. Um, so if you think back, you know, just not too long, it was actually a very good environment when it came to property investing or property buying, right? So you had a combination of low interest rates, you know, at 1.75%, you had low prices, you had a lot of government incentives, particularly around the stamp duty exemptions for first home buyers. All these factors contributed to, you know, a, 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 a controlled uh, or good environment for property investing and buying. Uh, but that said, though, we were coming out of the national immunization program. So that sort of improved the consumer sentiments uh, because it was very, very successful. And, and the gradual relaxation of the movement restrictions also helped with the consumer sentiment. All right. So in terms of property types, which one have received the most attention from home buyers? Well, at the national level, I think, you know, we still see the same uh, uh, property type being the most favorite, which is the terraced houses. Uh, in fact, the transaction volume for landed property actually experienced a 23.5% growth uh, compared to 13.9% growth uh, for high-rise subsale residential properties. Um, the median transaction price as well for landed properties recorded a 10% increase, um, whereas high-rise recorded a 7.4% increase. Uh, so you'll see uh, one thing for sure, though, is in the different states, you see different types of property become the choice, right? So, for example, uh, uh, Selangor and Johor, they favor spacious landed homes. So, you know, terrace houses be the key. Whereas in Kuala Lumpur and Penang, though, you will see uh, a, a different preference, which is affordable high-rise properties. Mm -hmm. Based on your findings uh, that you mentioned just now, uh, did you uh, discover any other interesting trends in the each state? Well, each, each state, it, you know, again, it is state by state differs. But in, for example, in Kuala Lumpur, high rise properties outperform landed properties by a lot, right? So it's to 6,900 transactions compared to 1,768 transactions in landed properties. So the focus is really on condominiums and apartments. And all these can be attributed to maybe a, a decrease in median uh, uh, price per square foot uh, for these type of properties. Whereas in Selangor, though, you will see the reverse, right? You will see terrace houses become the top choice for home buyers, uh, particularly in the affordable and spacious terrace houses located in suburban areas, right? So things like Serenda, Klang, even Banda Kinrara. Um, so these uh, terrace houses recorded the highest transaction value, which is at 18139 
compared to all other property types. And we've also seen an increase in the median price per square foot value uh, by 5.4%. Uh, over the 2018 period. Um, whereas if you go to Penang, you know, more popular among the property types would be the flat, right? Uh, because the transaction volume um, have actually gone up to 2,939. And as well at the same time, 4.7% increase in median price, uh, price per square foot. Now, this is likely driven uh, because we had shortages of affordable homes in the state, right? Um, in Johor, though, and lastly, I'm just wrapping up Johor, uh, we got a lot of uh, preferred subset landed properties, um, uh, and uh, the median price per square foot have increased by 11.6 percent compared to 2018. So clearly, Johor home buyers, you know, they gravitate more towards terrace houses uh, as a, uh, when they are comparing it to more affordable and spacious types of properties. Definitely, that's a good increase in the in the trend. So, uh, Sheldon, what is your outlook on consumers' purchasing behaviour in the current and even the future property market? Yeah, so that's that's one thing we, we keep a lookout for, uh, consumer trends. And given the times, you know, we're living in this new environment of, you know, people say new norm, but actually it's a norm now. Flexibility of work, uh, uh, work from home arrangements, etc. I think we, we expect to continue to see this trend of bigger home spaces and affordability uh, because these were the two you know, driving factors behind the purchasing behaviors of home buyers uh, in all the four major states, right? Um, but that said, you know, clearly we have uh, other factors to look out for as well, which may may or may not uh, imp uh, improve or, or, or decrease sentiment, right? So things like um, the interest rates, the economy, right? But nevertheless, I think what, what we are going to see is the commitment from the government and their initiatives. Uh, you know, we started with HOC, but in recent times, you see, we see initiatives like I Mileki and I Diaya. These are all coming through the, the systems and it's going to encourage home ownership um, as, we, as we gravitate through this, uh, this change. All right, um, that is a very good insight that was shared about the uh, eye property trends uh, between the 2018 before the pandemic and after the pandemic on the sub sale, even the median transaction price. As we can see, I uh, want to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will see uh, joining us for today, sharing about the property and then we want to say thank you, Sheldon Fernandez, the country manager of Property Guru Malaysia. And then uh, we're going to go on the next one, watch our colleagues. Ibrahim Sani speaks with Jill Finlayson, the director of Edge Intech of UC Berkeley. Her work revolves around gender diversity inclusion and they talk about equitable notion on how we can bring greater diversity in the realm of tech. So, Nyagawani taking a break. We'll see you soon later. Uh, uh, uh.